All right, Spirit Song, welcome to Daily Prayer. And uh, you're in for a special treat. Not saying that we're a special treat, but uh, we have the beauty. We are pre-recording this for in case I can't make it through a song, then we can just start again. <laughs> and What do you mean by can't make it through a song? What uh, do you mean? The Holy Spirit's <laughs> going to come upon you and you're not going to be able to make it? I've, uh, how many times have we done this one? Three, four times? Three or four times. Three or four times, and I've never once successfully made it through the song. He loses it in the end. In and the end. And he'll if keep it together If for it you. happens in the beginning, it's not a big deal. You just stop and restart it. But right. if, if it happens in the end, then oh, we have to record the whole thing again. But the poetry at the end, it kills me. Well, wait a second. Le uh, let me clarify. So okay. we have not pre-recorded this song yet. This is try number one. This is try number and one. And if we don't do it, I'll tell you what try we get to. And yet Nick has probably done this song for, I think, four Christmases. And one of the first times that we did it was when Spirit Song was super new. I want to say uh, Pastor Valerie had just moved. Uh, this is written in 2003. Yeah. I wow. mean, so Pastor Valerie had probably just come, and Nick did it, and me and Emily were sitting in the front row. And I had never seen Nick lose it in worship, except for one other time. And we won't talk about that. And I'm sitting in the front row, and Emily, like, elbows me, and she goes, Kesley, go help him. And I'm thinking, by this point, there was literally nothing I could do. I wasn't sitting with him because it's a song he typically does himself. So try number one. And I know he'll get through it, but he's going to show the poetry of what kills us at the end. Uh, so the, the whole premise of the song is comparing the feeling that the, the, the person, the, poa, the poet, the lyricist, Comparing the feeling of this Christmas, the things that the person is in. So I'll, it, I didn't write it, but I'm just going to say the words I. Me comparing what I'm feeling right now compared to Christmases before. You know, we're all on spiritual journeys. Sometimes we have highs, sometimes we have lows, sometimes we have plateaus, sometimes we have loop-de-loops. Sometimes it's a free fall. <laughs> uh, right now I'm just on one of those just flat. No, I don't want to say boring. Well, it's because the church is in our house, so we're very spiritual. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very flat. There, there's, there's, there's not hills and valleys. It's just, it's chill. But I can think of times when I have had Christmases and Advents when I have been connected, and I've been journaling every day and studying and and reading, you know, in Isaiah and then comparing to Scripture and you know, there are the, all these times when I think, yeah, I was so much more into it back then, and this year I'm just. Well, and then there's the years where we go through the motions, right? Oh, yeah. As worship leaders, sometimes we we uh, go through the motions, like fake it till you make it. I, I hate to say it like that because I do think that we really do truly worship most of the time. And yet sometimes it's, well, it's Christmas. We're here on Christmas worship service, and and we are just going to get through it, get it done, it's, whatever it it's, takes. It's I'm sure Pastor Misty understands and, and the retired pastors in our congregation that understand. It's like when we do funerals. I purposely have to set aside my personal coping mm -hmm. to get through the funeral. Yeah. And then after the funeral's done and the, and the family has mourned, then it's my own personal time to mourn, and it's tough. And sometimes I get that with Christmas, too. Yeah. I, I do music to serve at the pleasure of God and the congregation, and I just have to set myself aside. And this song, I have to do a lot. In all, f in all live versions of this, I have to compartmentalize myself and put it outside of the song. Uh, and I'm going to not do that this time, and we'll see if we make it. So you're not going to share the text? Or you no, I'll share okay. the text. Okay. All right, so the one at the end that gets me. Uh, after the whole song, it says, And I celebrate the day that you were born to die so I could one day pray for you to save my life kills me. It can't, I, can't, I can't even like listen to you say it. It gets me. Yeah. It gets I, I, me. I celebrate the day that you were born to die. Yeah. That was the reason. That's the plan. And that sucks. <laughs> but also like he did that for us. Uh -huh. He did that for you. I, I mean... Like, I hold on to that. Yes, it sucks. Yay, we're going to celebrate the birth of our Savior. It's and smashing we know together Christmas and, and Good Friday. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Easter at the end. Yeah. 
yeah, and that's it's it's tough. So we will see if we make it through. <laughs> so we invite you into a space of prayer. Um, and if you want to Google it so you can look at the words, the song is called I Celebrate the Day. It is written by Matt Thiessen, T-H-I-E-S-S-E-N, Matt Thiessen. So, all right, ready? No. Breathe. Send to yourself. Let us not fake it. Let us be in every moment, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and let us be present. Thank you for this opportunity. We give you today, we give you this Advent season, we give you this Christmas, and we give you our lives. In your name we pray.